Hi everybody and welcome, I'm Coach Carolyn, former professional tour player and today I want to talk to you guys about the sequencing of the rotation in the downswing. So you guys can make sure that you do it in the right sequence, in the right steps to hit the ball the best you possibly can. So let's do it. So today I want to explain to you guys the sequencing of the downswing. When do your arms go? When do your hips go? When does the weight shift? And all these questions that I'm sure are floating around out there and you've asked yourself previously, I'm here to clear them up. But to understand the downswing sequence of the weight shift and the turn, the rotation and the transition, we first have to understand the actual backswing rotation so we can get into that perfect top position with our body and our core and our shoulders to actually then hit the right positions coming down. So let's quickly look at the backswing first. All right, so in the backswing, and I've touched on this in a longer video previously, and I'm gonna link that below for you guys. But right now we're gonna just quickly touch on the main points, which is the ratio of rotation between your knees, your hips, and your shoulders. So textbook wise, in a perfect world, you have a 90 degree shoulder turn, you have a 45 degree hip turn, and then you have half of that turn on your knees. So what that would look like is we're going to go to the top of our backswing. We have a 90 degree shoulder turn. We have a 45 degree hip turn, and then we have half of the 45 degree in our hips. And that will put us in a really good top position. And if you cannot turn 90 degrees with your shoulders because there's restrictions, there's injuries, that is no problem. Just make sure you hit your ratio. So if you only turn your shoulders 80 degrees, make sure your hips turn 40. So make sure you have that. Whatever you're able to achieve in your shoulders, you can have that and achieve that in your pelvis, in your hip rotation. That's important because we want that separation because that separation is what's going to actually create that tension and hit in the downswing as we are transitioning. So that half ratio is super important for us to keep in mind. So now let's go to the top of our backswing. With that ratio, I'm gonna do 90 degree shoulder, 45 hips, half in my knees. And then now, if you look at the top tour players, really what happens before they even get to the fully finished position of the top of their backswing, they actually start transitioning. They do not start rotating, however. That is where we gotta be careful. So the first, very first motion that goes into the downswing, that initiates the transition, that initiates the downswing motion, if you will, is a weight shift into your lead foot before you get to the top of your backswing. So let's get to about 90% of your backswing. You're gonna start seeing these tour pros actually start moving their weight into their left foot, front foot. This is what it looks like. If you watch Rory or Tiger, anybody next time, you'll see that before they're even done swinging, they are already starting their weight shift. That is not to be confused with rotation. I do not want you to actually start rotating and getting that right hip forward before you get to the top of your backswing. This is more like a weight shift, a lateral weight shift that squats you down a little bit. Then your hands start dropping, then your hips start rotating, then your chest starts rotating. So to go step by step, at 90% of your backswing, you're going to start shifting your weight a little bit into your front foot to initiate that transition. Your hands are gonna start dropping. Your hips are then going to start turning. Your chest is gonna start turning and your hips are always gonna lead in the turn to your chest. So your hips are always gonna be more open in your downswing than your chest will be. And that is going to create the correct lag and the correct delay between your body and your hands. The opposite of this is getting stuck. So if you're asking yourself, oh, but if my hands are lagging behind my body, I'm gonna get stuck, I'm gonna push it, I'm gonna flip it. You will not. There is a correct amount of delay and lag between your body and your arms. There has to be in order to create kind of that whip effect, right? A whip doesn't whip if everything moves at the same time. A whip goes back and forward at the same time and the back and forward at the same time is what cracks the whip. And this is what cracks the golf swing. So we got to make sure that there's a correct amount of delay and that we can achieve with a very simple drill that I'm going to show you now. So the drill that I want to talk about is essentially a lower body activation drill that you can do on the range. You can hit balls with this. You can do it in a practice swing. So let's start it as a practice swing first. And I want you to, when you feel like you're about 90% done with your backswing, I want you to lift your front foot a little bit and then set it back down. So it's going to look something like this. 
And I want you to do this a couple of times with no ball before. And this really activates my lower body and gets me towards the target in my finish, high, strong, and the weight on my lead foot. And it doesn't allow me to start, you know, spinning out and staying on my right foot because really I've engaged my left foot in the correct way. So now let's hit some balls with this. I'm going to set up. As I'm 90% done with my backswing, I'm going to start lifting my lead foot. I'm going to set it back down. So let's do this. Yep, let's hit another one. This is going to be a couple of shots for you to make sure that your timing is good. And this is a drill, guys. It's really not about the contact that you have because we're, we're working on emotion, on muscle memory, on a feeling. It really doesn't matter how good you hit the ball with this because realistically, you're never going to hit the ball like this on the course, right? This is a drill, not a swing thought, if you will. Here we go. And I want you to hit about five balls doing this and then we're going to take a ball and we're actually going to just hit it normally. And we're going to keep that same thought feeling that we just created through doing this drill. And it's still going to help us a lot. So I'm setting up and I kind of have that in my mind, right? That my left foot kind of goes up and down and planting it back down. But I'm going to actually hit a normal golf shot. super solid, really puts me into a good finish position towards the target, weight over my left foot. And I love this drill, it's so simple. As I said, I recommend you guys bouncing back and forth between the drill and the actual hit. Make sure when you're doing the drill, you don't worry about your contact, it's not important. We're working on emotion, working on the feeling, on a muscle activation. Once you get into the five shots where you're actually hitting your ball, then it's about contact. Then it's about what's the ball doing, right? And switch back and forth between those two at least five times if you're working on something technical like this. And you guys are going to see a huge difference in the amount you improve and in the speed that you improve. So I hope you love this. Leave me a comment below. I always love to hear from you guys. If this is your first time on my channel, please like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time.